welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, as I always do, I want to say thank you to um, all of our regular subscribers and viewers. We really do appreciate you coming on and seeing what we're up to. And invite anyone who's perhaps found us for the first time to hit the subscribe button as well. And if you like what you see, give us a like too. Now, below you'll find some links to our store where you'll find a whole range of air gunning accessories and scopes um, to buy. Uh, and also to our website, alphamilitaria.com, which is full of air rifle reviews uh, and features and hints and tips um, on a whole range of air gunning topics. And we've also included some links to some Amazon pages for some products that I use on a regular basis. Now then, we're talking about the Norica Viriatus. It's not Harry Potter's gun. It is a bullpup from Spanish company Norica. And um, there are two or three different versions of this according to the Norica website. Um, there is this one, which is the BPHT, um, which is described as a hunting rifle. Then there is the uh, Viriatus BP, which is described as a hunting and target rifle. And then there's the Viri Viriatus TG, which is described as a target rifle. Now, I'll be honest, you know, I've looked through the specs on all of them and I can't really tell much difference between any of them. They all seem very, very similar. There is some difference on the, the, the high power level uh, for the, the target version, the TG, um, but we'll go all through all that um, in a little while. Um, all of them are, are available with this um, wood colored stock. It's a beach vaporized beach stock. I don't know what a vaporized stock is, but it's, it's very nice. Um, either available in this sort of natural brown uh, finish or in a, a dark, almost black finish again, but it's still uh, it's still a wooden stock. Um, now the rifle overall is uh, 740 millimeters long, has a 450 millimeter Lothar barrel. So it's got a full length barrel on it um, and it weighs 2.9 kilos. So it's fairly uh, compact, fairly light as well. Um, and I've had it around the, the farmyard and it, yeah, it's quite a pleasant thing to carry around. This big cutter handle makes it very very easy to, to walk around with. Um, 12 shot magazine in 2.2, uh, in 1.77, 10 shot magazine in 2.2, and I think it's eight shots in 2.5 as well. Now, um, <clears throat> this rifle is available um, in high power levels. Um, 1.77 at 22 foot pounds, uh, 33 foot pounds in uh, 2.2, and I think it's 44 foot pounds in 2.5. Obviously that's FAC levels here in the UK, but other parts of Europe, those are the sort of the maximum um, um, uh, power levels that you can expect from this. But in the UK, um, this rifle, which I should say is distributed by Edgar Brothers, um, is most likely gonna be available as 12 foot pounds, obviously with FAC orders as a special. Um, now at those sort of higher um, power levels, Norica says you can expect around about 70 shots in 177, down to about 47 shots in 2.5. Um, I couldn't find any uh, stats for 12 foot pound rifles. So what I'll have to do is when I take this down the range, um, I'll put some shots through it and I'll give you a shot count then. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through this rifle uh, from back to front. Um, we're gonna talk through the key features, zoom in on some of those key features. And then as I say, we'll take it down the range, put some pellets through it, see what it's like to live with um, and how accurate it is. And then, uh, yeah, I'll report back on those shot counts. So the Norica Viriatus HP then, or BPHP. Starting at the back, you have this uh, perforated um, butt pad, um, nice and squishy, very comfortable in the shoulder. There's no um, shoulder, there's no adjustment for it. It's a fixed shoulder pad, but it's, it's a nice one. It's a good quality has a black spacer on it as well, and it does make it comfortable in the shoulder. Now, above that, you have this cheek rest, which is a sort of a block of wood. And, you know, it's okay. Um, you want reasonably high mounts um, on this um, on this rifle. Um, I've got a uh, an MTC SWAT 10x30, the Atom model on this, and uh, that has quite a high mount. And with that, um, that setup, this block is is fine. Um, if I was really fussy, I would you know like to see that it kind of rounded off on the edges to make it a little bit more comfortable. But if you have the right mounts and the right height on this rifle, then then it's fine. 
I did have a, a scope with a, a lower set of mounts on it, and it was a little bit of a nuisance, but yeah, medium mounts or high mounts, it's not a problem. Now the action is right back at, right back, um, uh, at the end here. It's a side lever action. Uh, again, like most rifles, it's two stages. Not really sprung for the first stage, uh, but you pull it out to a first stage, then you pull it back to cock the action. And that drives a pellet through the magazine. And we'll, we'll look at the magazine in a little while, um, which goes into the breech here. Now on top you have a spirit level, um, which is quite a nice idea. Um, there is a phenomenon called Cant, C-A-N-T, um, which, is, is, which is where if you hold the rifle, anything other than the, the perfect uh, uh, vertical perpendicular, then um, you will get some inaccuracy with the rifle. So having this bubble level here just shows you if you are holding the rifle on a bit of a tilt. Um, in practice, it's quite difficult to put the rifle up to your shoulder and look at that at the same time. Um, but it will give you an indication. There's a nice long, I think it's a 210 millimeter um, uh, Picatinny rail, raised Picatinny rail up here, which gives you plenty of, of real estate for a scope. Uh, this swap prismatic, um, the, the Atom is a, a, a close to zero eye relief scope and um, gives you plenty of space to set that right back so that you can get that zero eye relief. Um, but you've got plenty of room up here for regular uh, traditional eye relief scopes. Uh, Thought of that um, is the is the barrel. It's semi shrouded for sort of half its length, um, 450 millimeters long, so it goes right back to here, um, and it's shrouded obviously for this first part. Uh, and the shrouding actually works quite well. It, it, it's a relatively quiet rifle without a shroud, but if you want to, um, you can remove this cap on the end, like so and you can fit a silencer to the half inch UNF thread. Now the, um, the air cylinder down here is uh, 340 cc's and um, it, the rifle is actually regulated. Now Norica says that the regulator pressure is set at 135 bar. Now I suspect that's for the higher um, power output versions. I don't know what the regulator pressure is set for for 12 foot pound rifles, but I suspect it's something lower than 135. Um, but on the end, you can see on the end here, there is a gauge, it's actually a wiki gauge, which will tell you what the overall fill pressure is in the um, in the, the air cylinder, but it doesn't, there's no, there's no separate gauge uh, for the regulator. And then filling it, and again, we'll show you the filling process later, is achieved by turning this collar on the front here to access the, um, uh, the fill port. Now the stock is completely ambidextrous. Um, you have this lovely big cutout for even the biggest hands. Um, the, 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 the woodwork is a little bit blocky, um, but it has this sort of um, swoop down here which relieves that um, quite a bit. Um, the pistol, um, yeah, it, pistol grip is actually quite comfortable. Again, it's quite angular. There's no um, stippling on it or anything like that, but it's, it's quite grippy um, and it's quite a vertical grip as well, but comes to the shoulder very, very nicely. Now the trigger is a two-stage trigger, fully adjustable, and you can adjust the weight of pull for between, I think it's seven ounces and 14 ounces, about 200 to 400 uh, grams. Um, and that's uh, out of the box, it was very nice. Um, that the first stage comes up to a nice abrupt stop and then it lets off quite a short second stage, but it lets off very, very cleanly. Now, the trigger guard is this sort of kind of floating piece of metal down here. And I'm not really a, a fan of those because I'm forever catching the, the sort of the open end of the trigger guard in clothing, camo nets, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, that's probably just me being a clumsy clock more than anything else. But what really irritates me is safety catches inside the trigger guard. And this has like a post and it's it's a bit of a weird trigger uh, uh, safety catch if I'm honest, because there's no sort of on off click. It just sort of moves kind of very sort of stiff, well not too stiffly, but sort of with some resistance between um, being on in this back position and then off in this forward position, but you don't really kind of get a sense for where the transition between on and off is in the travel 
um, of the safety catch. Um, so that's one sh one issue, and then obviously I'm going to moan about the fact that it's sighted within the trigger guard. But you know, lots of ri rifle manufacturers do that, um, and what do I know? But personally, it's not something I'm a big fan of. So I think that's um, all the major parts on the rifle. What we'll do now is we'll uh, zoom in on a few of those, show them to you in close up. Then we we'll go through the whole magazine filling process, uh, inserting the magazine into the breech and the whole air filling process. Then finally we'll, we'll nip down the range and put a few shots through it. Now, if I'm honest, <coughs> the magazine is a little bit of a faff. Uh, it's beautifully made out of some sort of alloy. Uh, there's no plastic in it. Consists of this very sort of square outer shell and then the uh, the chambers on the inside. As I said before, 12 shots in 177, 10 in 22, and 8 in 25. Now, there's no exterior wheel um, to, um, to rotate that inner drum. You have to literally get your fingers inside it and turn it around yourself against the spring. Now, hopefully you can see at the top here, there's like a little slot. Actually, this little slot just here. Um, it's actually two, there's one here and one here. You wanna focus on this one on the left as you look down on the magazine. And what you'll need to do is um, rotate the, the chambers round Hopefully you can see this. So ro rotate the chambers around anti-clockwise and drop a pellet into each of the chambers um, as it's exposed. Now the thing is, if I turn it like that, you'll see hopefully, there you go, that the <clears throat> if you turn it so that the hole is fully exposed, you'll end up just dropping the pellets through the, through the hole. Um, so what you need to do is just turn it around ever so slightly further into that slot so that you're just blanking off that hole a little bit so the pellets won't fall through. As I say, it's a little bit of a, of a faff. And hopefully you can see, so that's the hole sort of fully exposed. And you'll want to turn it around just a little bit more so that you can drop pellets in against the, uh, the slot, but without the hole fully exposed so it won't fall through. <clears throat> And it's just a case of dropping pellets in nose first and keep rotating that in a drum, holding it against the spring. Because if you let go, it'll fly back um, to the um, open position against that hole and the pellet will fall through, which is aggravating. So you just want to turn it so it's just off center from that breech hole and drop the pellets right in. Make sure they go right the way down. All right, four more to go. All right, and then, so the very last pellet, you can't rotate the magazine any further. So then if you can see that there, um, all the pellets are in all the other chambers bar the last one that goes in that hole uh, and you can't do anything but to avoid the fact that that hole is fully exposed. So what you need to do is just put your finger behind the hole at the back of the magazine, pop the last pellet in, and then make sure that obviously you don't tip it up when you, uh, when you load it in the magazine. Now this um, little hole you see here, that locates in a pin, uh, onto a pin in the breech. Which, act, which actuates the magazine actually. Um, and uh, and um, it just goes right in from the top. So we'll show you the uh, installing into the breech process next. So inserting the magazine into the breech on the Norica Viriatus is nice and straightforward. 
Now I've taken all the pellets out bar one because you can only put the, uh, the magazine in when it has pellets in it. The, the side lever will only return um, when, uh, when you have pellets in the actual magazine itself. But I've got the safety catch on. Now to insert it, you need to just pull back on the, the side lever and the magazine just drops straight in from the top and then you return the side lever. And then once you've taken your last shot, the magazine will kind of click against a little stop um, and the side lever will open, but it won't push back. So it tells you that the magazine is empty um, and that you need to refill. Saves you uh, also wasting any air as well. Filling the Viriatus is pretty consistent with most other PCPs. Um, at the front end uh, of the, the air cylinder here, you have a rotating collar. And you just want to rotate that round until you locate the hole, which is the actual uh, fill port itself. And then as part of your pack, you will get uh, a fill probe, which is this gold part up here. This silver part is an aftermarket um, attachment. And then simply pop that probe into the, the cylinder as far as it will go right down to the end. And then attach your uh, your fill hose, whether that's a uh, from a compressor, for, from a compressed air bottle or stirrup pump, to uh, to the end of the the probe, uh, give that a 250 bar fill. Then obviously bleed the the air away from your from your airline, and then once you've done that, remove the the fill probe itself, and then just rotate that collar to keep any muck out of the uh, out of the workings. Now, once you've given that rifle your uh, 250 bar fill, you can see right at the end of the, right, of, of the air cylinder here, unfortunately, underneath the muzzle, is quite a large uh, wiki gauge, which will show you your overall air pressure fill. So that's a quick rundown on the Norica Viriatus BPHT. Uh, I should have said it comes with a set of sling studs as well, uh, and it also comes in quite a nice black plastic hard case too. So right, with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run down the range uh, put a few pellets through it and see how it shoots. Well, I've come down to the beautiful surroundings of Reading Air Target Shooting Club once again to try out the Norica Viriatus. Now, I set a target out at 30 meters, my usual kind of distance, and I'm using Air Arms Diablo Field pellets. This is a 22 caliber rifle, and the, these are 5.52 millimeter size. Now, if you've seen any of our reviews, you'll know that I tend to use Air Arms Diablo Field on just about every rifle. I do that because I find them pretty consistent with most rifles. Um, some rifles like a different pellet slightly more, um, but I find that most rifles like these pellets most of the time. So they tend to be my go-to. Anyway, 10 shots, let's see how we get on. Well, that's all 10 pellets, a full magazine. Let's go and see how we got on. That looked pretty good from back there. Oh yeah. So that's, uh, where are we? That's one hole, a bit of a ragged hole, probably well, 10 pellets through the same hole anyway. Um, probably about 15 millimeter hole, I'd imagine. Um, torn a bit of a ragged hole in that. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, that, that's at 30 meters with air arms, Diablo field pellets in 5.52 size.
Well, there you go. That is the Norica Viriatus. Um, retails in the UK for £995, or at least that's the recommended retail price from Edgar Brothers, the UK distributors. And at that sort of price, it's got some fairly stiff competition against some other very well-known brands. Um, it's certainly not mega bucks price level um, that you can pay for an air rifle. It's certainly not entry level either. It sort of sits in that kind of mid price range, probably at the upper end of that mid price range. Um, but it's very well made, very accurate too. Had it on the chronograph, it's 11.2 foot pounds and very consistent at that. And I also uh, put this, put plenty of pellets with this as well. I got it to about 150 before I got fed up using the magazine, to be honest, and there was still plenty of air in it. So I'm guessing it's probably 180, maybe 200 shots, possibly even more to a full charge. Um, plenty anyway from that regulated action. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because it really does help us out. And if you go to our website, uh, alphamilitaria.com, you'll find information on a whole range of air gunning topics. Anyway, until next time, thanks very much for watching.